Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be covering these tropical systems out in the Atlantic. As you can see, Humberto has strengthened rapidly overnight and as you can see, it is now a category four with an eye starting to clear out. You can see that right now, Humberto is a category four hurricane with 145 mile per hour winds max wind gusts of 175 mile per hour winds and eventually as we move into tomorrow this storm hurricane humberto could be up to a category 5 hurricane and then back over here near cuba looks like our tropical wave is finally starting to consolidate and actually recently it has officially formed into a tropical depression and the possibility of our storm basically traveling all the way up the coast here and then just stalling either right over south carolina or potentially an entire day and then moving off of the coast and many more scenarios are now coming into the picture as you can see our cone of uncertainty goes from small to kind of large as we get further up to the north we've got North Carolina still in there South Carolina still in there Georgia and parts of Florida in that cone of uncertainty which means that we've got a pretty large area for our storm being this close to the United States where uncertainty still definitely exists but before we get started folks if you could hit that like and subscribe channel i mean button jeez louise i can't even do that right <laughs> <laughs> hit the like and subscribe button please and now we're gonna get started with the video let's go right into it so first off doing a closer dive here to tropical depression 9 you see that we are at 35 mile per hour winds and you can see our storm has some decent amount of convection around it right now even a little area of that spin looking pretty apparent here on visible satellite you can see that left side of the spin there and a ton of convection on the eastern side so our wave is definitely getting healthier as it starts to move away from all all of these mountains here in Cuba and the Dominican Republic over the short term it's gonna be bringing some heavy rain and some flooding and potentially even tropical storm impacts here into the Bahamas all the way up into Freeport near Marsh Harbor as well as we go up further into the future you can see that our closest approach is forecasted at least for now to be at around October 1st as a category one but what we're about to go over is showing you these different scenarios that are now popping up into our models as we get closer as this storm continues to be ungovernable and honestly quite annoying to forecast first off looking at our water temperatures out there over near the Bahamas we are still talking around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius hanging out in this area and that is piping hot and as this storm continues to track up to the north it's going to be over these waters the entire time so we've really got to watch that sheer environment and how that humidity and dry air kind of interact as this approaches our frontal boundary that is going to be coming off of the united states because again for this storm's entire life cycle it is going to be over some very warm waters. so if any of those kind of sheer or dry air starts to relax just a little bit could see this storm do some pretty intense intensification in a short period of time so we do get to watch that not a whole lot of models are indicating that but there are, are some hinting at a little bit of a stronger potential here as we move into the future now looking at our latest model runs you can see here is the gfs model you can see that there's Humberto over there. There is Tropical Depression 9, Future Amelda. And as I push this forward, you can see that the GFS actually strengthens this storm, stalls it, starts to interact. You start to see that hourglass shape, and then it gets slung shot away from the coast. So the GFS is back on to our storm not really making much impacts to the United States, bringing a lot of waves, potentially a decent wind field into there. But this will keep the flooding at a little bit lower for a lot of folks because it will still stall. But actually, its closest approach to the United States, if this is the case, will be towards Florida. But there are so many different scenarios here to look at. Here is the Euro model as well. It brings future Amelda all the way up to the north and then eventually brings it right next to the coast where it kind of just stalls for about half a day to almost a full day just off of the coast here of South Carolina and North Carolina, bringing a lot of rain, wind, also a little bit of storm surge there into North Carolina before we start to see that hourglass shape around our storms again. And then Humberto grabs on and then slingshots Amelda away. And I think what's happening here is that the weirdness in our forecast that we were talking about yesterday and how Imelda was interacting with those mountains a lot and kind of staying in the same area. You can see the Euro model even still kind of tugs that low pressure system further to the west as it is still interacting with some of these Cuban mountains. I think the interesting thing is that that has slowed down our storm a lot. It's added a lot of 
friction into the environment with this storm and that has kind of really pushed our storm to a slower jog than what the models were indicating before but these are just our global models we also have something called our hurricane models which tend to do better with the smaller scales with this storm so let's go ahead and look at the hwrf parent model and push this forward you can see that it kind of stalls out over there uh, near cuba before rocketing up to the north making a very close approach and then it just kind of stalls doesn't really move at all again this is like an over a 12 hour period where it just kind of sits off of the coast of georgia and south carolina bringing those tropical storm force winds and that storm surge and that flooding potential for a decent amount of time before you can see we get that hourglass shape here in our no aid line and umberto starts to grab on and then eventually you see Imelda start to move away from the coast. Now, HFAS A parent model also has our storm now moving up to the north. And look at this. Humberto actually gets slung shot around Imelda and actually makes a very close approach to North Carolina, making that wind field a lot larger, maybe bringing some tropical storm impacts to the outer banks as well. But one thing I do want to preface here before we go even further into our forecast here is how much these models have been inconsistent lately. They didn't really model those interactions with the mountains too well. Now we have a slower system. But things could still change as we go into the future. This storm still has some land interaction with the Bahamas to come. Not a whole lot of mountains in the Bahamas, but there is enough uncertainty right now I still be keeping an eye on this forecast because again if it changes last minute unfortunately this storm is very close to land we could still have some decent impacts I mean Humberto was forecasted to be a major hurricane but a category 5 hurricane wasn't really the forecast so really just depends on how our wind shear environment interacts with Imelda our drier air so let's go ahead and check all of that out so if you look at the moisture around Imelda right now it's looking pretty healthy as it moves up to the north it's going to wrap around that dry air but you can still see a pretty decent core of moisture is there in the center of low pressure in Imelda so although this drier air is wrapping around it is still keeping intact and it is still technically strengthening as it approaches the coast but you can see that drier air wraps around Imelda even goes into Humberto as our storms start to enter interact so that's the GFS's solution there some decent dry air the euro solution where it differs from the GFS is that dry air gets way more embedded into the center of the storm and we actually end up with a weaker storm until we really get these storms interacting and that allows for the fluence aloft and gives Imelda a little bit of a higher chance of developing but this isn't almost just like a, a subtropical low at this point it kind of just pushes it away from the coast but again you know we've got to keep our eyes on these surprise scenarios our storm is still technically interacting with those Cuban mountains going to be going over the Bahamas here in a little bit which is going to be some land interaction some minute friction details that aren't going to really shift the forecast too much but we've got to watch out for surprise intensifications if we don't get anything like that and I think these models are going to end up being pretty correct because again those mountains have really slowed down Imelda and has allowed Humberto to catch up and that gives a higher probability of our storms interacting and therefore a higher probability of that Fujiwara effect now if we come over here to our shear environment this is also important in the development of our storm this is the euro model you can see our trough indicated by this big old u shape over the southeast you can see that shear is going to be pushing into Imelda early on at least according to the euro model and it keeps the wind field on the outside of Imelda relatively broad and that shear even makes it into the center of circulation there which is going to be one of the problems the upper level pattern near this storm at least according to the euro is going to be a lot less organized until we get into about October 1st as Imelda is getting really close to the East Coast and then eventually gets rocketed off to the east there but again if this thing stalls and we get a bunch of rain just keep on piling up and piling up this could still be even without landfall a very impactful storm and even potentially a catastrophic storm now if you look in the G the differences of the GFS and the euro you can see that the GFS initially starts off with a little bit less shear near the center of our storm but as it rockets off to the north you can see it kind of nudges that track off up to the north as well allowing our storm to strengthen a little bit more into the upper levels become a little bit more vertically stacked and allowing our storm to become stronger and again we still see this thing basically completely stop next to the east coast before rocketing off to the east now here's our potential rainfall totals out over here this is the gfs which had a approach a little bit further away from the coast still bringing some orographic lift into some of these higher elevated areas bringing some heavier rainfall
small, but as you can see, the distance and how much moisture is further up to the north with our storm is going to make a big difference with the GFS only having around two to three inches of rain. Now, if we come over to the Euro model, which has a little bit of a closer approach, you can do see that we do get a band here of five inches of rain, which would bring some flooding. And depending on how fast that falls over time, seems to be pretty slow. Probably wouldn't be too big of a flooding issue. And if we continue to push this forward, you can see that in total, our highest rainfall totals will probably be near the coast of South Carolina with around seven inches of rain. But keep in mind, this is only that scenario where our storm stalls off the coast and doesn't even make impacts, which I do still think is in the realm of possibility. We have a lot of uncertainty. A great way to demonstrate that uncertainty is by using our ensembles. And as you can see here on the Euro Ensemble, we still have a lot of members actually make it in to the United States. You see if a lot of our deterministic models are taking the close approach and then rocketing off to the east approach but we still have a decent chance that those models could shift back towards the coast that's basically what the ensembles at least what i use the ensembles for is where could our sneaky last minute moves be and here on the euro ensemble you can definitely see that there is still a chance that this could shift back to the coast let's go look at our other ensembles and see if we can form an average so here's the gefs and as you can see it is a little bit more certain here that our storm will come up too close to South Carolina and North Carolina, kind of do a stall little loop-de-loop -loop, and then move off to the east. But we still have about a 30% chance here on the GEFS ensemble for some landfall. The Google Deep Mind is a little bit more confident in a landfall here with about a 50-50 split, maybe a 60% 40 split. 60% for landfall, 40% for an eastward move out into the ocean. So even though a lot of our deterministic models, here's another ensemble as well, and you can see it is doing something kind of similar. But even though a lot of our deterministic models are indicating that our storm is not even going to impact land, we could definitely see those shift like we have seen in the past because there's kind of just riding on the fine line of possibilities here. Given that we still have about a 50-50 shot is probably the main reason why our cone of uncertainty is so big right now. Yes, a lot of our models are showing this path, but when your ensembles say, hey, we still have a 50% chance, basically all that means is that tomorrow we might wake up and all of our deterministic models could flip-flop sending this again still into South Carolina, or even if it just sends it just to the coast and then starts stalls just right over the coast or maybe even just off of the coast we're talking about the differences here between this area getting two to six inches with a closer approach being something like eight to 16 plus inches of rain which again would be catastrophic for some of these areas not only that that storm surge would be a lot higher the closer the storm is so just because our deterministic models are showing that this thing might move off of the coast i still don't want people to let their guard down i still want people to be prepared and ready to go get the supplies or evacuate just in case we get that last minute change in the path. I don't want you guys to be getting caught with your pants down, but if we see this model consistency last for a pretty decent amount of time, then maybe we can build some confidence. But for right now, unfortunately, because our ensembles are still so split, it's going to be hard to tell. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully we can get some more clarity for you guys tomorrow. And a huge shout out to everybody that gave me all those birthday wishes. You guys are amazing. I got to see Reed Timmer yesterday. And guys, he is absolutely killing his show right now. I mean, it is so interesting to hear him break down all of his adventures, all of his science experiments. And I learned a crap ton. So if you guys love weather and Reed Timmer is just in your state in general doing his tour, I would go get some tickets. It's definitely worth it. But anyways, guys, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.